Welcome back, guys. Game number one did go the way of Tom One Gaming up against Sandbox here at the best of three of the wild card to decide who's going to move on to the next round of the playoffs here at LCK Spring 2019. Showmakers able to show up with this Corky. It got late enough in the game, and they snuck enough Barons for Tom One to come back and sneak that game away. And honestly, Sandbox played so well that I'm actually going to award my MVP vote to an ability. It's Realm Warp, because Realm Warp yeah. won them this game. Now, Mountain Drake would be another good argument, but Sandbox Gaming controlled everything except the Drake. They had a lot of gold in their team. They had a Jace, who was so powerful, but they didn't turn that into Drakes. They tried to find leads elsewhere. That meant that they left it open to the gods of RNG, so you don't focus on the RNG. You focus on the objective control, the team with the priority lanes should get what they want. And clearly, they didn't put enough time into Drakes, and from there, it went away from them when they were really in control of the pace of the game. So Sandbox, I'm going to be looking to see if they can rebound in terms of having another game plan that's easy to execute in the early game, but easy to translate to the mid game, because the mid game transition, surprisingly, was mistake laden from the side of Sandbox. Someone here on blue. Sandbox on red. Gonna start off with the same ban that Dalman did in game one and take away Jokers. Morgana, and same thing with Kale here against Nugger. Order of business, Sandbox Gaming does not have side selection in game number two. They chose blue in game number one. Dom One Gaming, their only side selection of the series, they do choose blue side for game number two. Now, Jay's first pick could be definitely be reiterated. Rise answer, and Rise in general is going to be denied, so they are setting up for another potential big Nuggery pick. He doesn't get three bans against him. How lucky, only two. Feels good, oh, wait, but how Silas about Silas that's available? Uh, they just give it over. All right, well, in Extremely Korea. Extremely questionable. Silas has been super highly prized, but this might actually be calculated by Sandbox because Damwon Gaming's best Silas player is, in fact, Nogari, who is undefeated on the pick. But Jace has a pretty good matchup into Silas overall, and you don't get much value out of stealing. I guess you get to become Jace, or you could have a WTF2 Jace moment, which is pretty exciting to look forward to. But power-wise, you definitely look at it and say, wow, Silas opened for the first time in a long time since it was re-enabled. And Damwon Gaming are pretty much locking in all the champions that people are tilted about in solo queue and around yeah. the world. If only Kale were left available as well, but uh, that one was banned. Probably like Silas should have been. There's a reason it was permabanned up until now on 9.6 in Korea. We didn't see it once until now. As, uh, was first pick and snatched up immediately as Joker gonna hop onto the press this time around. So with Callista locked in, the Draven threat is gone, and they don't have to think about banning AD carry second round. That's why the Vayne introduction is taken. Ghost notably hasn't played any Vayne so far in the season yet. One game from Nuclear. Now, Damon Gaming won't necessarily want to make the comp around Nuclear. It feels like that's where they've tripped up. Nuclear hasn't been able to be kind of the MVP hard carry that's been needed, that some other AD carries have been able to do this season, but he doesn't have to be. He has big carry top laner and a carry mid laner as well. I think Rek'Sai getting through to Canyon is a very big surprise for me, two games in a row. Now, I didn't have an outstanding game in game number one, but Rek'Sai can be tricky to draft against, and Damon Gaming with no first round jungler might be able to get a double ban out here. I don't think we're going to finally see that jungle Jace that I've hyped up from time to time in the playoffs, but we'll leave that morsel up. Will we see the Jax and what the Jax represents, given that the Jax hard carry from on fleek happened in Sandbox Gaming versus Dam one last time out? Yeah, I wouldn't mind it into this one, but uh, it would be beginning to line up a lot of AD in this one would allow Dove to hop onto something very hard on the AP. And speaking of which, is LeBlanc is going to be taking away both of these guys. Very good at the LeBlanc Showmaker 6-1, Dove 4-2. and two. So just going to be taken off the table. And we're seeing the Week 10 meta uh, spur, spill into playoffs because Lissandra, notably, has not been picked or banned so far. And the priority on Lissandra has never been lower. It might actually be just completely ignored in this draft. Very potential for that. Sandbox desperately want to know who the hell is going top lane or mid lane. They need to know where Silas is going. So can Dom One Gaming keep it flexible in this round? The answer instantly is yes. They lock in Akali. So 
that does mean they have very flexible lane assignments, and it's much harder to find champions that work against both. Support Ooh. pick from Beryl is a bit of a different one. It's the old Thresh counter pick, the superior hook champion in the 2v2 in the Nautilus. Does come on in. Think I did just see the 0% win rate flash before my eyes, but obviously doesn't mean too much with the low amount of games that it has been played, but I just love coming into playoffs up a game, the confidence to just lock that down and say we're going to go for this. Now, <laughs> this will be pick a, for Dove. It would be a Silas counter pick if you think about it. The alts here to I steal so. are not so great. Consider, which ult are you stealing as Silas? You can impersonate Jace. The Jarvan ult obviously is pretty decent. The Karma ult, not great. The Threshold is okay, and I guess Callista's probably one of the most interesting ones. And just honestly, who do you bind yourself to at level one? Rek'Sai becomes old Rek'Sai if you bind yourself to the jungler because she gets an AoE knockup, the one thing she doesn't get with all her buffs. That would definitely be an interesting one, but uh, you have to think about the Nautilus hopping on in there would be kind of funny oh, as man. well. Another CC for <laughs> Nautilus? Yeah, just hop him in and it's like whoever he locks onto is not moving is for that, 10 seconds. And that's five CCs if you uh, add in the... Because yeah. notably Nautilus is the only champion with four. We got the end end of the flexes and notably it's not Callista top... Uh, sorry, Kali top Callista. Kali top lane. Yeah. Like I might have imagined, a Kali can drop aggro on a Jason lane really hard with the bust to the shroud. And get Silas top lane for Nogri. So they're going with the player that's performed best on the pick. Nogri undefeated on the Silas. It's a champion that gets priority in almost every lane. Guess what? It's a player who loves to push up and be aggressive. Gotta like it. Still just packing insane damage once again with the Vayne and the Akali picks that did eventually come in. And I love that gigantic front line with the Nautilus. They were thinking about the Poppy, but... They took it a step further in terms of the size, I suppose. Karma will be able to poke out Akali at points and obviously can hit the Akali pretty easily in Shroud. Silas versus Jace, we're almost guaranteed WTF 2 Jace. I for one welcome yeah. the 2 Jace overlords and Dumb One Gaming. They've got a lot of tier list picks, but you can see the synergy and two item spikes available to Sandbox. Sandbox want to win this game hot and heavy in the first 25 minutes. Desperately trying to, so game number two gonna start. Let's see how it goes. Sandbox fans a little bit meager there. We're on the sandbox side, and yet they are showing a bit of pause. Understandable after losing game number one. So many champions that Silas hates to see on the enemy team here, but Silas will still be that pick that is so so powerful and we're going to see the bind that we talked about it will be onto the rec side an aoe knockup on rec side two jaces one game it feels like the memes write themselves but sandbox have very much drafted a screw silas comp Many so let's see if they can get away with that because there's not a lot of value in the ultimate and the laning matchup against jace Yes, you can get some priority early because you can just abuse the passive, but overall, Jace will be very favored in the trades. Nice little ward there from the side of Dom on Gaming Spots. Four members of Sandbox coming on in. They are going to sweep it away and kill that ward, but they will anyway force the red buff to go that way. And take a look, guys. Actually, more importantly, Summit is mid against the Akali on the Jace. So he's going to choose this lane matchup. I think in a long lane, you get a lot of value out of Shroud being able to drop aggro, and it's still going to be relevant in this lane. But it's much easier to gank. Oh Here's boy. on Fleek. It's going to force that flash easy peasy. On Fleek doesn't have to use much. On Fleek doesn't give up any free rift scuttles, we know, and he's actually interested in blue buffs and croaks as well. Bump, I should say. Here is the rune setup. Aftershock, the pretty standard rune choice, we know. Now we're taking a lot of free damage, and... Well, this lane sucks at level one yeah. for the Silas. And it does, but I just love how they're really trying to extend on Leek's dominance in that one. But take a look at some of the picks that do come oh, in Oh, undefeated squad from Dom one game. There you go. Barrel technically undefeated. No, First time on this one. He's never won, but he's never been defeated either. And we're going to yeah. go glass half full <laughs> when we're trying to sell them. Oh, these guys. Mostly defeated, but uh, good with reads across the board. And these 
Picks also are so powerful early game, and they've gone for early game lane assignments for Karma and Silas to try to poke him out. If Karma gets a Arden Sensor early, you know exactly what's happening here. Two item Callista, Jace in general. They have, you know, very little magic damage threats, so you could understand trying to build AP, but then I think you just subvert the comp if you try to go, say, Rod of Ages or Scaling AP on the Karma. You need to win this game three thirty minutes or have an unassailable lead at that point. The Sandbox Gaming, they have a lot of ways to attack Damwon early, and Damwon really have nothing happening until we see one item completion on Akali. Unless Rek'Sai can really just win the game straight up with amazing jungle performance. Yeah, so before these games did start, I feel like you and I were on a similar page where it felt like the team that was going to win game number one would just take the whole series, but we saw that the players themselves expected a 2-1, and so far it looks like the teams are very even. We're going to have our first fight of the game tonight, stun into the wall. So we do have Oxley coming on down, and he's level four, looking for some action. Really oh. trying to force this one onto that. Uh oh, engage! Follow that CC, but he's able to buffer it. They get on top of Joker, but he is able to flash away. Top lane. Meanwhile, top side here in Hungary does he have that King Slayer trying to get on in? No mana for oh. now. He's gonna knock him up, but the minions in the auto. It's gonna be enough. First blood goes to Dove in the solo kill. Hungary tries to play for lane, but he's not able to do it. Really big that Karma picks up the kill. If Karma goes in the death chamber. Maybe Silas can subvert. A tricky matchup against the Karma. Karma picks it up. Nagari has to lick his wounds. They both TP in, and I think the man fighting hasn't stopped. Gonna get a lot of fighting overall of this map, especially as Canyon is again down in the bottom side. No flash here on Joker, but he's not gonna try to force it this time around. So Silas has not been available to be picked ever since the global ban ended start of week number 10. There's many reasons for that. But you also think about if you just are focused on what we've seen in the LCK, Silas is the name that we use over here because Silas is losing Valdez. Yeah. So why the Silas priority is an important question. And it's because the champion does so many things so well. Champion who can steal away ultimates. And some champions have to have low-powered QWEs just to get a sick ultimate. So just says, thank you very much. I have a QWE that lets me get priority in almost every lane. Almost the operative word. And from there, Vayne, I have a hard CC that procs Aftershock. And I get to steal your ultimate. I'm just a better champion. And in some cases, that works. Also, in a draft, you first pick Silas. He could go in jungle, mid, or top. Usually mid-top. Make it clear. And has very good matchups into a lot of lanes. And has push priority. And as the enemy team, you're like, oh, do we have to draft Udyr, Karma, Jace, champions that have low value ultimates? So for drafting, it sucks to give up Silas. But you can also put together a screw Silas comp. And Sandbox Gaming have gone a pretty long way to do that. But the jungle attention comes through from the Rek side. The turret plate comes in. And Nogari in his two undefeated games on. Silas was heavily targeted, fell behind, but had some great team fight. Silas might have to be team fight Silas because we get a replay of the 1v1. It's hovering over the cooldown as well, just to give you a better idea of what he did not have available. It goes in without Kingslayer up, and by the time he pops the container, look at this, flashes away from what would have been Kingslayer, the heal never comes through. Punked by Summit, nice 1v1 moment. I got him, I got him. I got him. My mind went to Summit because of the top lane, but it was Dove, of course. So. While he wasn't celebrating, nice movement for Dove in the top lane. Yeah, both Dove and the left side folks always calm, cool, collected, not showing too many emotions. They know it's just the one kill, but it is definitely a big one that we did mention. He also said at the end of that, no flash for Silas. So, did see afterwards on Fleek return to the top side to help out. We have four teleports, so the lane assignments can persist as long as they want. That means the WTF 2 j is perhaps never going to happen. We'll wait and see. Nobody ever hijacks the form of the Jace. Ghost and Joker on the Callista Thresh lane. We talked about how Nautilus that lane counter. Nautilus looked pretty good in the all-in that we saw bot lane, but had to split his CC between two members. In the end, right now, lane is in a really awkward spot. Canyon was topside, and now actually, goes to Joker. They're smartly not gonna go too hard on this, at least for now. Coming over the wall here, Tilling Smite as well. They actually 
Force the Clash out of a Kalista. Can be hard to do at times, but I suppose he was really scared about any follow-up. And I think that's right. I think he was spooked, Valdez, because if I know for sure Beryl doesn't have Flash, even Nuclear having Flash up, you're not, almost certainly not going to die there with your heal up. So it's such a very scared Flash, and something that Ghost has done over his career has been a little bit spooked, a little bit second to the punch, and even in good matchups, sometimes respected opponents too much. And that's very much a best of three, losing game one move from Ghost. Might not be too costly, might be something that Canyon returns to. I mean, he's still down on the bottom side, right? And hanging around with that red buff. Uh -oh. Looked like they were coming on in, but... Take another look at the top side here as Snuggery even after that solo kill. Doesn't seem too deterred to continue pressuring the top lane and get another plate. I'm very surprised that Dove has shown so much respect. Remember, Canyon was shown bot side. You can take really nice trades as Karma, and Dove has given up 10 CS and turret plates. So very surprising to see Dove not continue to apply pressure after in the first kill. Because Karma's not applying pressure, Valdez. Yes. What is he doing? Look at the timing here. Flash for both Cannon and Barrel just came up. They were waiting for this moment. But looks like Ghost and Joker, they know the timing. They're going to move out of the lane as that does happen. Looks like they're even taking the Scuttle Crab here as we go along. Nice so move from them. Good yeah. timing's pointed out there, Valdez. I just, I worry that if Karma just lets Noggery farm, it negates the whole point of having a top lane Karma. Lost chapter, we'll see if that is going to be an entire loop. Arden sensor timing is really the important thing for me. I feel like if you don't go Arden sensor first or second item, then don't even bother and try to be an AP nuker. You look at that one team and you say, the front line is really only Nautilus with Aftershock proc. Everyone else is pretty squishy, but actually Noggery, depending on the build you go, could be a frontliner that can absorb karma damage as well. Take in every so often a look at the mid lane as remember Sandbox was the one to try to switch up the lanes. He is down a bit. Both of the laners have gone for very lane specific items. Next drinker and the arm guard taken respectively here. So Summit doing a nice job to extend that lead and you can get a plate here in the mid lane. Turret plates for Jace. He probably has the highest average turret plates for champions if we had that stat. It has to be the way, right? Just given how Jace has so many great matchups. Watching the play up top side. Zombie Ward actually getting a lot of value from Dove. Has that one down. Oh, we taking aggressive trades. He only knows how to go in about us. <laughs> we have learned that from here as, uh, okay. Gonna sell out a bit of his own damage, stealing the Karma ult there. Like it. Karma ult. Stealing ult, remember, gives a passive, and in this case, gives a bit of burst from the Manch Q. Just provided there. Still, not gonna be super impactful team fight wise. We're waiting to see Rek'Sai launched into a backline. But the Warrior Rek'Sai will obviously wanna get out pretty quickly after that big engage. Side lane matchups are going to be so interesting. Summit has gone. Hextrinker needs that for lane, needs that to survive in Akali in the side lane because from our experience of the Akali Jace top lane matchup, you hit those item timings and suddenly solo kill potential in a long lane is always a consideration for the Akali. Shooting that over the wall. Unfortunate positioning. Looked like the max range of the Jace, but Showmaker also going to make his way over it. Clear out that ward of his own with the help of Canyon's presence. Both these junglers still looking for an opportunity in these lanes. Haven't really found too much outside of the bottom side. Cost of Canyon spending time bot side and then finding nothing. Bot lane is it awkwardly. Vayne's actually pretty down in CS. He about 20 CS disadvantage. Jace in the mid lane, able to, in a short lane, get a lot of reliable poke onto a Kali. So CS leads and that solo kill. Uh, the reason that Sandbox Gaming is there to find a good start, but Noggery is up in CS. And we're not at the point yet where Showmaker and Nuclear have hit item timings. Item timing delayed in mid, very respectful here with going for the entire secret's arm guard before, and he's siding with the Gunblade. Sandbox Gaming will rue the fact they weren't able to control Drake's in game number one. They've got some nice leads, mid and bot lane. They've got the first Drake. They want to keep it stacking for them. Barrel now coming on in, just gonna 
straight up base check this, but there is a Rek'Sai behind. They do get the knock up here on a Ghost, but they don't have the damage just yet. Coming from behind here is Showmaker, and finally, he is going to go down as Silas makes his way in. A double kill for Nuggery. That's the heal even from the AD carry and stays alive. Not one gaming. Able to get three off of the back of that. They come from all angles and Sandbox can't find the positioning with the Karma being able to buff everyone. Joker and Ghost die with flashes up. Came from all angles, there was no answer, and now Dumb One Gaming get the three kills, stick the landing on what has been so far a bit of a rough early game lane. We watched the replay here, it's a double recall spot, and Beryl, who hasn't been able to get things started in the lane, walks up, is Nautilus. We know all about the CC he provides, and the threat range of Dumb One Gaming's frontline means never any pressure onto Nuclear. He doesn't end up being the hard carry, but he ends up getting three autos that aren't possible for the Callista. Callista wants to hit her timings and run in a comp like this. She can't. The Dumb One Gaming, Coach Kim jong Su feels pretty hyped, and so does Nuclear. Hi, sir. Jung. Said one word. We all know that word. Nice. As uh, it was pretty nice. Love the Cataclysm, too. Out of Nuggery to just get on in there. Not waste any time with his own engage for that follow-up. So definitely a huge turnaround here for the side of Dom on gaming. But pressure continues down in the bottom side as Nautilus nowhere to be found. Looks like an extra plate gonna go the way of Ghost and Joker. Tower plates definitely in a comfortable spot. The side all sandbox in the bot lane, weren't able to take more fire, as we can see very clearly now that we have gone past the 14-minute mark. This Drake stacking this. Dumb One Gaming kind of got for free is being a bit more accountable for Sandbox. They've taken one, but now the Cloud Drake is stuck on the map for a little while without there being any further inroads onto it. And Nogari, he actually has an item lead over the Karma. And, uh, you know, he went Leandri's for lane presence. I think his lane presence is looking pretty on point. Ludens, I should say. Yeah. Lane presence. yeah. Ludens, Leandri's pretty on point. It does. It's quite good. And uh, the poke cam is also clearing the lane, obviously. A top notch AP item. If you're not building that one, what are you doing? As tons of vision control up in the top side. We're not going to see any Rift Heralds here taken before plates do go down, but still a lot of vision committed to by Dom1 up in that top side. The only person is not ready to go is Showmaker, who cribbing together the second parts of his gun blade. Once the gun blade is done, I think Akali hits a side lane and things start to fall into place for Dom1. Sandbox wanna force hard. We've talked about that from Champ Select. You can definitely see the zoom out to know that's what they're thinking, but Canyon's in good counter gank positioning here. Oh, Joker. In so much trouble. He's gonna have to use Bates Paul to get out of that one, but the knockup is gonna deny him going on in. Don't think he was going to follow up, but either way, he will be saved, and the turret continues to get quite low. That means the counter gank is successful because they're able to dissuade action on the bot side. Nogari poking away so recklessly. He wants to be Karma again. Living out his dreams. You know what I want now, actually? Yeah. Wouldn't it be cool if we had a, um, a Silas skin where he's like kind of a little kid who dreams of being like superheroes, so every time he steals, he's able to like steal the identity of Karma, steal the identity of the opponent. I don't know what the, sc the skin name would be, but kind of a, a big oh. dreamer. He dreams he's Karma. He's Karma for a second. That. He does oh. the both damage. He's diving the turret. Nuggery with the aftershock makes it look easy. Well, no dreams required. He just gets to be Nuggery when he gets, grows up, but he's growing up strong in game number two. Solo kill onto Karma to pay back for the first one that went Karma's way. That's a bad sign for Sandbox Gaming. See, he was threatening it and Dove thought he could get away with staying under the turret, but the answer is absolutely not, as even Demolish taken here on the Aftershock build. Pretty standard in the top lane is going to be able to take down that turret all by himself. And I think that Dove going top lane is something that Sandbox Gaming have done a couple of times. They've been flexible around Summit and Dove in terms of lane assignments, but in this game, he's looked a lot more like a mid laner in top. Oh, Snuggery. Trying to burst him down. There's Kingslayer. Can he actually get him down here? Looks like he's going King to follow up. There's the Kingslayer. He's trying to turn it around. Cataclysm coming on in, but Nuggery lives through the flag even. He's going to be able to get away. It's outrageous that he lives there on about 15 health at the end, Valdez. Nuggery walks away. Not even a compensatory kill over the Sandbox. Thought he could fight with the Silas three levels down. He was wrong. 
Oh, they're just looking for burst. Look at Dove's health bar. It's not like he's low, but he misses the shield timing. And this is why. The fact that he could never get lane control. He felt much more like a mid laner who was a bit out of position in the top lane. Gets solo killed. Before he gets the payback there. Honestly, the follow-up play not dying to the Charvin was even more impressive. Yeah. Lights take a look at that replay as well, but just doing Silas things as the immense amount of damage was taken. Will now get the Proto Belt up next eventually. And is this guy going to be able to be killed? He's highest level in the game now at 13. And well, even though Dub didn't get that solo kill, we'll see if he can actually lane against the comp. It's against a comp that was built and a lane assignment that was built to shut him down. We've been waiting for pro games to back up the Silas narrative of this champion for sure is broken. From the release of the champion, I said, this champion does too many things. It's really been Noggery leading the charge today and in the past would be undefeated 3-0 on this Silas. Finally seeing the potential of Silas translated into good build and rune choices. And so far, some great execution. However, how about a third solo kill one way or the other? Noggery's got a leash of his own and now he's hunting. As he is up a level, is going to get in range as well. Going to flash that knockup is Dove. But man, Silas, he's got a lot of mobility, got him. guys. He's going back in. Could have seen that coming a mile away as Nuggery picks up another solo game. And This is why they went with Nuggery. No flame in the lineup surprises some people, but Nuggery is on a charge. He seems so up and about. He seems very much taking the beatings of being on the sub bench and turning them into victories. Suddenly, Silas can easily solo kill Karma. I don't think the Jace with the Hex Trinket turned into the entire Maw is going to be enough. The Silas problem of their own creation, only team to leave it open is going to be a problem. But here's the Force in mid. Wow, really trying to force that one. They're doing a lot of damage actually to Canyon, but more importantly, are going to make Shelly irrelevant yes. as she does zero damage. Hashtag worth on that one then overall from a sandbox perspective. They made Shelly. So, a free death. Silas goes back, has Proto Belt, needlessly large one. Oh, look at this. Disgusting. He's up 2,200 gold. Yeah. And he was laying against Karma. How many and times? He got solo kill. I feel like we've seen three Karma tops this season trying to dunk on a matchup because Karma top is so strong. And the Karma always loses about yeah. us. Oh, dear. Karma just getting styled on here in the LCK. 700 gold effective bound to a 9.6, so just like live, it is not the 300 base included. It's an Infernal Drake, and Nogari looks at multiple enemies and says, you really want to fight with me? And I think the answer is definitely no. The answer is absolutely not, as he is sitting down here on the bottom side now. I, if I'm Dove, I'm scared to fight against this guy at all. And you have to sit way back as well, so he's going to be giving up a lot of that lane presence for Nuggery and the gang to potentially take that dragon. Come on gaming can just now brute force. There was so much control for Sandbox mid bot. They had huge CS leads, but now they're invading against gold leads and Nuggery. And the fact they can see Nuggery on a ward is welcome respite. If they couldn't, they can't even walk up as far as they have. Yeah, Canyon almost getting caught there on the back side. Funnily, he is able to dodge that one. You could have seen maybe a nice amount of burst damage coming on in from the Jace. Did get hooked up, but did not come through. That means that Domin should be able to tie up the Infernals here. Also looking for some presence in the enemy jungle before they start that objective. Observer really wants the post game to be synced, so he just puts Summit back top lane. Yeah. So that stats can look a bit cleaner. Here's the force. Domin Gaming won an Infernal. Good luck trying to contest it, although Beryl. Meanwhile, Barrel just gonna ult on to Ghost, who flashes away a load. Cataclysm as on Blade traps himself. He's gonna do a lot of burst damage in an AoE, remember. It applies to all members, not always relevant. We have Cinder Hulk Jarvis. This is an AP stacking silence. Oh, it goes. Uh, Showmaker by himself does have the Shroud. Not quite able to do that much damage, really. Nuggery is the carry of this team. Both follow up is just barely gonna fall short onto Barrel as Sandbox now pushing on it. Does Noggery take the invitation, doesn't have flash, and needs to actually register his E in order to get into range of this ult. Back away for now. We don't get to see what was going to be some pretty scary burst from a purely AP stacking Silas. Stealing away an ability with a very high AD ratio, like the Cataclysm. So it's just a turret for a Infernal Drake trade. 
it should have been free Drake stacking for Sandbox in game number one. It was actually Dam One that took all of them. And now Dam One steal away a Sandbox gaming Infernal that given where the lanes were at, should have been Sandboxes 10 times out of 10. Not quite the way it's going to work out this time around. As still waiting for the next one here. It's very even in gold if you take a look at the top side. Exactly even right oh. now at 23 minutes as we're going to try to get on top of Nautilus. He does buffer that one and he is a little bit tanky, but not 4v1. It's a nice catch with the Fates call. We'll go the way of Sandbox. Long middle lane there from the dumb one side. They didn't take the precautions in order to walk up. Very nice play from Ghost. This required his ultimate, and they get a pick. Nautilus very squishy, as we know, from the support role. Now it's 23 minutes, and timers can be so important. Remember, Kingzone versus Griffin was rewritten from a really impressive Baron force around this time. Sandbox will, at minimum, get control. They've got a Callista. Maybe you have to run at it to try to work against Nogari, but it's TP. It's up. Teleport available, and nice amount of damage. They do have the Callista. They should, though, entirely on top of them. The Shock Blast doesn't even do that much damage. Flash going to be avoided and here. And finish this one. By Showmaker, getting in range with that Shroud as Canyon desperately trying to do so himself. Ult comes in from Showmaker, but he's ticking down. It will go the way of the Callista. But can they get out of the pit as Rex Knight's going in? Look at the knockup coming in from the Nautilus, but it doesn't the matter, Nuggery in the back line, double kill going to Canyon here, as it looks like Dom1 Gaming are going to be able to clean up the majority of Sandbox here, only on fleek will get away. It was the killing fields for Dom1 Gaming, just like it proved to be for Sandbox in game number one, but Valdez, important note here is that Sandbox had no lane assignment against Nogari, so had to try to take the Baron when it was actually up for grabs. There were so many futures in this game where they couldn't deal with the side lane, they could never get near Baron and would just lose it straight up. They've got the Glista Rand, they make it around Baron. Unfortunately, they have no Realm Warp as an escape plan. Their escape plan is the Death Chain. See the four-man knockup from the Nautilus, and the version looked okay, right? They were able to burst down the Akali. A lot of that damage did go on a Nautilus too, but unfortunately when that much CC comes in and you're, you're pushed into the back of the pit with nowhere to go, and main free hitting, you're just gonna die. They remove Baron off the rift and maintain their gold lead with the Baron buff, but they can't actually set up a winning Baron buff in that play. So it's a trade-off that feels bad. You want to say it's a Fiesta Baron, but it seemed like this game was going to head to a point where Nogari would just win in the side lane and they could never group and go to Baron. So they make a Baron play 5v4, they take down the Baron, but no more. And now Sandbox, who we said needed to get it done, 330. Well, I'm looking at the timer about as 330 doesn't last for much longer, and they never got an Arden sensor, so it's going to have to be an outplay. And it will on fleek here with the Baron pushing on in. Nice amount of poke already, but take a look at Nuggery level 16. He wants Cataclysm. Behind. He's not going to be able to grab the Lantern, actually has to go north, but they can't quite get into the back line. They're going to take out the Jarvan first, and Canyon was the one to die, but they have no front line now to Shambok as Nuggery jumping on in. As does Showmaker, nice hook though, as Nuclear is going to get low, Showmaker as well is going to have it turned up, and Nuggery going 1v3, does he have the damage? He takes no. out one, but it's not enough to win the fight. Sandbox actually outplayed them, they needed an outplay, they got Ooh, one, they've got okay. four of them, Barrel has no health bar, can they chase one down as well, going to have the movement speed soon, not going to try it. No value out of an epically fed and farmed Nogari in that fight. He was actually frustrated that Jarvan died so early. There's no other damage ults for him to steal. Nogari never gets in the fight until he's poked out. Watch the replay and remember that Nogari has almost all of the lead on the side of Dumb One Ganya. There is no overall gold lead. So while Callista gets older, she kites back fast. Nogari can't hijack the Cataclysm before Jarvan dies. And Nogari, who's the person with all the gold, misses the chain, never gets in, and they all get poked out because Ghost lives even after the normal assault. And the box just in perfect position. They're funneling all through. It's just, it's just not enough to actually make it happen, especially after everything missed. And as you mentioned, no cataclysm. And Dunk gets 
The so, game is over if they lose that team fight. They win it, and in a pretty one-sided fashion, Ghost even lives for so long through it. Now, the rinse and repeat. Summoner will be up on Ghost. The fact that he didn't have to flash there also is really big Valdez, because his Cataclysm, when it's stolen next, is going to do unbelievable damage. I believe it has a 1.5 AD ratio that's turned into AP, right? So it's going to have a pretty sick AP ratio in this game. Because of that, the burst damage will always register. But if they can subvert the Nugger Reaping, and remember, their comp is still a screw you Silas comp. They gave Silas a lead he should never had. Silas and the one in the split push they still can't really deal with. But in the team fight, so far, sample size of one. It looked pretty good for Sandbox. That it did. Again, it was pretty messy when it did come down to it. You can see Sandbox, their response. We're not fighting against Silas. We're pushing by ourselves by V4. We don't care about you, Nugri, know, and uh, See if it does work out as five members pushing on in. Duggery split pushing himself. The race for now. Okay. Let's get me to get the turret. They're gonna get that, and Meryl, unfortunately, is immediately just gonna go down. TP now, they can easily play him. Sandbox, though, is going to turn onto this one, jumping in the back. They got Duggery! Immediately gonna go down, but it's all up to nuclear now. Can he push them back? He's gonna get the one kill on a Jace. That's okay. We're pushing on in for more. Not wasting any time with this one, but not too many minions. The next wave is coming on in. Trying to get to the end, Valdez. Is so maker, but nuclear on the backside. They're flashing on in. Down goes the GA, but on fleek. So close with that stopwatch. Joker though assassinated by Showmaker. Now nuclear on the right side, trying to clear it out. Canyon trying to buy some time, and he will. Back. As there are no minions left over for Sandbox to continue pushing. Sandbox are outplaying down one, but to one, and they're trying so hard to make it about what they have and what the enemy doesn't uh -oh. have. And here's Showmaker. It's a big deal. Baron spawning in 30 seconds. Can they get the kill onto these two members? Jospo is up and away. Ghost here is actually outplaying the 1v3. He gets the oh! one, he gets the two, he gets the three. Ghost is gonna shut him down. Unbelievable from Ghost, kiting back there. Nuggeries alive, no TP to try to end the game. Sandbox game, they still wanna end it. Oh man, how does he turn that one around? Nuggery now trying to go 1v3, but it doesn't look like he can. And the shot left to the face, is enough. And they take out the silence, and they're they taking out the game. One to one will be the score as Sandbox win game two. They needed to win 330, and at 30-01, the Nexus goes down. Sandbox had the read. If it's not now, we lose. If it's about the Silas, we lose. They force onto the inhibitor turret at the perfect time. They were looking for Dumb One Gaming to not make a clear call. Dumb One tried a lot of things. They almost got there, and a super play from Ghost. So maligned on BBQ Olivers and struggling at 80 carry. Pulls it off with the Kaidi on Callista. And now Dumb One Gaming have the question of do we need Flame? Do we need to change things? And can we win a best of one to stay in the LCK playoffs? All comes down to one more game, as you mentioned, and somehow Sandbox from that position. Very intelligent game, I have to say. So many of the decisions that they made were exactly correct. And a couple of super plays later, they're able to pull to their win condition just barely. You get the zoom in on Ghost. Had, uh, you know, a couple of rough moments in the early game, but eventually calmed down. It was able to carry quite well there towards the end. And I love that you talk about win condition, because Sandbox never lost sight of it. Even when Silas was solo killing Karma, and everyone's like, well, look at you guys yeah. with your screw you Silas comp. They still understood, we can group and force, and it's a lot more situational about what Dumb One can do in a team fight. Their team fights often didn't have all members. They rolled the dice on the Baron. They took what looked like a 50-50 Baron because they said, if we don't take Baron and make it about Baron now, we just won't get Baron. Dumb One gets a Baron and the game ends because then Nogari is winning the side lane and has Baron. Ghost is kiting here was just unbelievable. Needed that super play, but they only got access to the super play by first forcing the Baron, then also looking for the end rather than just accepting an inhibitor in the top lane. They were able to jimmy out a win somehow out of a, a crazy set of circumstances. And down there, three on two onto Ghost. I mean, the Karma Shields, a couple of them helping out a ton. They not really able to do damage. And Kali, no ultimate means that there was just not enough damage to take out Ghost. And he played it perfectly, understanding that they had to make their stand. Take a look at some of the stats, actually the most damage 
goes to Karma. Damon Gaming wanted to hit the side lane with a big Akali and a big Silas. But the Silas got way ahead so early. And the Karma, they say the Akali, unfortunately, never really had a role in this game. They couldn't 1-3-1 one, because one, Sandbox said, no, we will not make it about how strong Silas is. We will group and play with Karma's utility and Callista Jace when they're strong pre-30. And that's why the timer, overall 30-05, is so critical. Sandbox stuck with their win condition, even though it looked like their win condition was blowing up in their faces. You guys didn't believe, but Sandbox made it happen yep. somehow, some way. These guys, very smart, but Dom one not going to give up here going into game number three. It all comes down to this. One more game to decide who's going to the next round.